Day 27 from the Bible in a Year Challenge is going to come from Exodus 23 through 24, Proverbs 13, and Matthew 26. Exodus 23, a call for justice. Do not pass along false reports. Do not cooperate with evil people by telling lies on the witness stand. Do not join a crowd that intends to do evil. When you are on the witness stand, do not be swayed in your testimony by the opinion of the majority. And do not slant your testimony in favor of a person just because that person is poor. If you come upon your enemy's ox or donkey that is straight away, take it back to its owner. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you struggling beneath a heavy load, do not walk by. Instead, stop and offer to help. Do not twist justice against people simply because they are poor. Keep far away from falsely charging anyone with evil. Never put an innocent or honest person to death. I will not allow anyone guilty of this to go free. Take no bribes, for a bribe makes you ignore something that you clearly see. A bribe always hurts the cause of the person who is in the right. Do not oppress the foreigners living among you. You know what it is like to be a foreigner. Remember your own experience in the land of Egypt. Plant and harvest your crops for six years, but let the land rest and lie follow during the seventh year. Then let the poor among you harvest any volunteer crop that may come up. Leave the rest for the animals to eat. The same applies to your vineyards and olive groves. Work for six days and rest on the seventh. This will give your ox and your donkey a chance to rest. It will also allow the people of your household, including your slaves and visitors, to be refreshed. Be sure to obey all my instructions. And remember, never pray to or swear by any other gods, not even mention their names. Three annual festivals. Each year you must celebrate three festivals in my honor. The first is the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days you are to not eat bread made without you are to eat bread made without yeast, just as I commanded you before. This festival will be an annual event at the appointed time in early spring, for that is the anniversary of your exodus from Egypt. Everyone must bring me a sacrifice at that time. You must also celebrate the festival of harvest when you bring me the first crops of your harvest. Finally, you are to celebrate the festival of the final harvest at the end of the harvest season. At these three times each year, every man in Israel must appear before the sovereign Lord. Sacrificial blood must never be offered together with bread that has yeast in it, and no sacrificial fat may be left unoffered until the next morning. And you harvest, as you harvest each of your crops, bring me a choice sample of the first day's harvest. It must be offered to the Lord your God. You must not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. A promise of the Lord's presence. See, I am setting my angel before you to lead you to safety to the land I prepared for you. Pay attention to him and obey all of his instructions. Do not rebel against him, for he will not forgive your sins. He is my representative. He bears my name. But if you are careful to obey him, follow all my instructions, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, and I will oppose those who oppose you. For my angel will go before you and bring you to the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites. So you may live there, and I will destroy them. Do not worship the gods of these other nations or serve them in any way, and never follow their evil example. Instead, you must utterly conquer them and break down their shameful idols. You must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water, and I will keep you healthy. There will be no miscarriages or infertility among your people, and I will give you long, full lives. I will send my terror upon all the people whose lands you invade, and they will panic before you. I will send hornets ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites. But I will not do this, but I will do this all in one year. I will not do this all in one year, because the land would become a wilderness, and the wild animals would become too many to control. I will drive them out a little at a time until your population has increased enough to fill the land. And I will fix your boundaries from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the southern deserts, deserts of the Euphrates River. I will help you defeat the people now living in the land and you will drive them out ahead of you. Make no treaties with them and have nothing to do with their gods. Do not even let them live among you. If you do, they will infect you with their sin of idol worship, and that would be disastrous for you. Chapter 24. Israel accepts the Lord's covenant. Then the Lord instructed Moses, Come up here to me and bring along Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of Israel's leaders. All of them must worship at a distance. You alone, Moses, are allowed to come near to the Lord. The others must not come too close. And remember, none of the other people are allowed to climb on the mountain at all. When Moses had announced to the people all the teaching and regulations the Lord had given him, they answered in unison, We will do everything the Lord has told us to do. Then Moses carefully wrote down all the Lord's instructions. Early the next morning, he built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He also set up 12 pillars around the altar, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent some of the young men to sacrifice young bulls as burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half the blood from these animals and drew it off into basins. The other half he splashed against the altar. 
Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. They all responded again, We will do everything the Lord has commanded. We will obey. Then Moses sprinkled the blood from the basins over the people and said, This blood confirms the covenant the Lord has made with you in giving you these laws. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the leaders of Israel went up the mountain. There they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there seemed to be a pavement of brilliant sapphire, as clear as the heavens. And... Though Israel's leaders saw God, they did not destroy them. Saw God, he did not destroy them. In fact, they shared a meal together in God's presence. And the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain. Stay there while I give you the tablets of stone that I have inscribed with my instructions and commands. Then you will teach the people from them. So Moses and his assistant Joshua climbed up the mountain of God. Moses told the other leaders, Stay here and wait for us until we come back. If there are many, any problems while I'm gone, consult with Aaron and Hur, who are here with you. Then Moses went up the mountain, and the cloud covered it. And the glorious presence of the Lord rested upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from the cloud. Then Israelites at the foot of the mountain saw an awesome sight. The awesome glory of the Lord on the mountain looked like a devouring fire. Then Moses disappeared into the cloud as he climbed higher up the mountain. He stayed on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Proverbs 13. A wise child accepts a parent's discipline. A young mocker refuses to listen. Good people enjoy the positive results of their words, but those who are treacherous crave violence. Those who control their tongues will have a long life. A quick retort can ruin everything. Lazy people want much but get little, but those who work hard will prosper and be satisfied. Those who are godly hate lies. The wicked come to shame and disgrace. Godliness helps people all through life, which the evil are destroyed by their wickedness. Some who are poor pretend to be rich. Others who are rich pretend to be poor. The rich can, buy a can pay a ransom, but the poor won't even get threatened. The life of the godly is full, and light and full of light and joy, but the sinner's light is snuffed out. Pride leads to arguments. Those who take advice are wise. Wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when dreams come true, there is life and joy. People who despise advice will find themselves in trouble. Those who respect it will succeed. The advice of the wise is like a life-giving fountain. Those who accept it avoid the snares of death. A person with good sense is respected. A treacherous person walks a rocky road. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't and even brag about it. An unreliable messenger stumbles into trouble, but a reliable messenger brings healing. If you ignore criticism, you will end in poverty and disgrace. If you accept criticism, you will be honored. It is pleasant to see dreams come true, but fools will not turn from, their, from evil to attain them. Whoever walks with the wise will become wise. Whoever walks with fools will suffer harm. Trouble chases sinners, while blessings chase the righteous. Good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth passes to, God, to the godly. A poor person's farm may produce much food, but injustice sweeps it all away. If you refuse to discipline your children, it proves you don't love them. If you love your children, you will you will be prompt to discipline them. The godly eat to their heart's content, but the belly of the wicked goes hungry. Matthew 26, the plot to kill Jesus. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover celebration begins in two days, and I, the Son of Man, will be betrayed and crucified. At that same time, the leading priests and other leaders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, to discuss how to capture Jesus secretly and put him to death. Do not, but not during the Passover, they agreed, or there will be a riot. Jesus anointed at Bethany. At Bethany. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had leprosy. During supper, a woman came in with a beautiful jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste of money, they said. She could have sold it for a fortune and give the money to the poor. But Jesus replied, Why berate her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but I will not be here with you much longer. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I assure you, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be talked about in her memory. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him thirty pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for the right time and place to betray Jesus. The Last Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover supper? As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man. Tell him. The teacher says, My time has come, and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover supper there. 
When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve disciples. While they were eating, he said, The truth is, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, one by one, they began to ask him, I'm not the one, am I, Lord? He replied, One of you who is eating with me now will betray me. For I, the Son of Man, must die, as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for my betrayer. Far better for him if he had never been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, Teacher, I'm not the one, am I? And Jesus told him, You have said it yourself. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it and eat it, for this is my body. And they took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which seals the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Tonight all of you will desert me, Jesus told them, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never Peter, Jesus replied, the truth is, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. No, Peter insisted, not even if I have to die with you. I will never deny you. And all the other disciples bowed the same. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus brought them to an olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, sit here while I go on ahead to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he began to be filled with anguish and deep distress. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell face down on the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you stay awake and watch with me even one hour? Keep alert and pray, otherwise temptation will overpower you. For though the spirit is willing enough, the body is weak. Again he left them and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away until I drink it, your will be done. He returned to them again and found them sleeping, for they just couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went back to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he said, "Then he came to the disciples and said, Still sleeping? Still resting? Look, the time has come. I, the Son of Man, am betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. See, my betrayer is here. Jesus is arrested. And even as he said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a mob that was armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent out by the leading priests and other leaders of the people. Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I go over and give him the kiss of greeting. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, teacher, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of the men with Jesus pulled out a sword and slashed off an ear of the high priest's servant. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use a sword will be killed by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly? But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? And then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I some dangerous criminal that you have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Jesus before the council. Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Cephas. How did I pronounce it last time? Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of religious law and other leaders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter was following far behind and eventually came to the courtyard of the high priest's house. He went in, sat with the guards, and waited to see what was going to happen to Jesus. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witnesses, there was no testimony they could use. Finally, two men were found who declared, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Well, are you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God that you tell us whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say. And in the future you will see me, the Son of Man, sitting at God's right hand in the place of power, coming back on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror, shouting, Blasphemy! Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty! They shouted, He must die! Then they spit in Jesus' face and hit him with their fists. And some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, you Messiah, who hit you that time? 
Peter denies Jesus. Meanwhile, as Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, a servant girl came over and said to him, You are one of those with Jesus, the Galilean. Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you are talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some other bystanders came over to him and said, You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter said, I swear by God, I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went away, crying bitterly.